Well, this is the Grand Union Canal at Rowington, controlled by Leamington Angling Association. Fantastic bit of water, um, full of fish. Hopefully we're gonna catch some roach. I've brought primarily bread. There's an outside chance of a bream or a skimmer, but it's, it's roach I've come for predominantly. And as you can see, I've brought the absolute minimum of tackle. I've got my F25 seat box. I've even took the foot plate off, so it's nice and easy to just sling on your shoulder and walk. Um, I've got my net and my side tray in a little single net bag. And then I've got a pole bag with my pole in, just 30 meters of pole and a few top kits and a landing net handle. Don't need anything more than that really. And it also means I can be nice and um, mobile as well. So I might have an hour and then I'll move, have another hour and then I'll move. I might fish three or four swims today. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but the first swim is right behind me here by this nice looking boat. So we're gonna have a go there. Right, we're all set up. It's took absolutely minutes. Um, <laughs> I've literally just got a top kit, a cupping kit, a tub of bread, which I've already mixed up, and a slice of bread there, and some spare slices. And uh, I'm good to go. I've already plumbed up. It's, it's nearly three and a half foot, uh, about a foot from the boat. I'm just gonna get a nice dollop of my sloppy liquidized bread feed. That's probably a third of a pot. And that's just gonna dollop in and then I'm hoping to just get a bite within five minutes. And if I haven't had a bite after 10 minutes, I'll simply uh, get up and move, move peg. So um, it's such an easy, simple way to fish. I'm dolloping that in from a height. I say, if I don't get an instant reaction, then it takes seconds just to quickly pack a few bits away and walk a, a few pegs further along and have another go. But that's it. I've tried all sorts of bread over the years, really experimented with brown crumb, white crumb, liquidized bread, and different alternatives. And, and all those options will catch your fish. But the one thing I like to do is wet it. Um, a lot of people will feed dry liquidized bread um, and it just creates a big film on the surface and, and a lot, half of it seems to float, which I don't think looks, looks great. I like to dampen my feed, um, but actually I prefer to mix it to a slop, like a sloppy soup, as long as it's not towing, um, I like to feed it really saturated, really wet, um, and I dollop it in from a height. And in my experience, it, it, it gives you a quicker reaction. Any hungry fish will investigate that. If it, I always imagine, like, you know, if a geese or anything fly overhead and they, they poop as they're flying, that little splosh on the surface, I've watched fish come straight in to investigate. Any, any sort of noise like that, they, uh, they'll see if it's food or not. So I think you get a bit quicker reaction by making a, a bit of a dollop. Um, you get a nice-ish cloud going down, but because it's fully saturated, it'll go straight down as well. It's not gonna drift out your peg. It's gonna, it's gonna cloud where you want it and then settle on the bottom, ready for those fish. There we are, first fish. Feels like a decent roach. We swing him. Wee! <laughs> Risky swinger if that was a match. Yeah, first fish on the bread. Almost set your time by that. Five minutes, fish on. <laughs> Hopefully, there's a few more. Well, I generally like to start just off the bottom, usually about an inch or two. Um, I always think, oh, missed that bite. I always think those fish are swimming off the bottom naturally anyway, and I try and have the bread sort of in front of their noses. Um, but later on in the session, or if I think there's some skimmers or bream in the peg, then I might lay on a little bit of line on the bottom and maybe fish a slightly bigger bit of punch. But um, generally, with bread, I like to fish off the bottom generally start about an inch off the bottom, but I'll come up as much as six to eight inches, especially if it goes really clear, then um, those fish seem to swim off the bottom even more.
Right, we've had a, a little short session there. It's uh, It's been okay. I think it's going to be a bit better the other side of the bridge. Probably got a dozen little roaches there. Well, nice chunky roaches, some of them. We're going to quickly tip them back. And uh, we're going to go to the other side of the bridge and have another go. Well, that's took minutes. I've moved just the other side of the bridge and a slightly wider section. A bit more confident catching a bream or a skimmer here. Certainly have done in the past. So um, it, I've got the same rig. I didn't even break the rig down. It's, just, it's pretty much the same depth. It looks like I'm fishing quite close in, but actually if you go past the middle, it shelves up to nothing. There's just no water over there. So um, I'm still fishing the same range, which is I've got my 13 metres of my MTX2 pole with the butt and the 11 metre section removed. So I'm saying, what's that, nine and a half, ten metres? And uh, straight in front, I've got an option. I have brought some casters as well, which we might feed, but I'm quite confident of trying to catch a bream or a skimmer on bread. So that's it, we've plumbed that up already. I'm just going to feed and off we go again. Well, I've just fed my swim. Um, I like to give it five minutes if I can. So whilst we're letting that settle, I'll change my slice of bread. That's from my first session. Quite a few little holes in there. So uh, that's uh, we can I can take that home with me and liquidise it back up to honest. Waste well, not, want not. But um, I'm going to put a fresh slice of bread in. Now for canal bread fishing, um, I only ever use medium sliced. Save your thick slice for dobbing bread on commercials. Um, but medium slice. It's definitely right for canals. Um, if it's thick slice, it's just too thick and you get too much, it gets too stodgy in, in, on a 20 or an 18 hook. So um, I just cut them into halves and um, just make sure to change it. If, if there's any sign of that going stale or dry on top, just change it for a fresh slice and you'll often start getting bites again. Um, so what have I got there? I've got um, six halves there, more than enough for a, a day's fishing. And um, so that's it. Um, and I don't steam it. I don't roll it. Um, I leave it fresh. Um, you buy as fresh as bread as you can, and just and I just use it like that. Um, if I, if I'm having trouble with the bread coming off, I might just quickly squeeze or press it with my fingertip and actually punch that little bit. But um, I like to have um, as fresh as bread as possible, and I want the fish to suck it in like soup. If you steam it and make it go tackier, if you roll it with a rolling pin or anything then it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay on the hook a lot more and it's going to impede the strike and sometimes you'll bump an occasional fish. So on a canal like this where the weights are quite low, um, try and keep your bread as um, fresh as possible and also as soft and as fluffy as possible on the hook as well. Right, I think four mil is the optimum size for a canal like this. Um, you catch roach, skimmers, everything on it. But I do like to start on either a five or a six mil from a very first one or two drops. Because if there is a bream or a big skimmer about, just experience tells me they're more likely to have that slightly bigger punch. So, um, but I'll quickly drop down to a four mil if I have to, um, or for most of the session, to be honest. And if it's really hard, I'll drop down to a three mil, but generally, if you can catch on a four mil punch, it just seems to be the optimum size. But start off on a slightly bigger one and you've got your better, your, this is your best chance of a bonus fish on your very first put in. Well, right on cue. Uh, on five minutes, we had my first bite on this uh, on this second swim. Um, had a nice little flurry of roach, but then it's just gone completely dead. And I've given it a good 20, 30 minutes in case there was a bream in the swim. 
nothing so maybe a predator's moved in i don't know but to be honest it's getting really nippy the wind's really sort of blowing on my neck from behind so um so um we're gonna have another move and get somewhere a bit more sheltered and uh, see if we can find some quality roach Well, we're on swim number three and uh, I'm on to uh, slice of bread number three. So we'll pop that down there, ready for punching. And um, on this swim, I've decided to feed a few casters as well. I've just got a handful, well, what's that, quarter of a pint of casters. So I've just decided to feed a swim just out the way as well with casters. So I've got a bread swim and a caster swim. Um, and I've fed those two swims already. So whilst we're waiting for those to settle, we'll have a look at the rigs. Well, I'm not expecting many boats today. So I can fish nice, light, strung out rigs. Um, and the lighter you can fish on a venue like this, I think you get more bites. If you fish too heavy a float, you generally get a bit more resistance and the fish can uh, detect it and spit, spit the bait out a little bit more. So I like to fish nice, light, strung out rigs. For the bread rig, I've got a 0.2 Dino Dralian. We've cut, I could potentially fish a 0.1 gram today, but I can fish this anything from sort of three foot to five foot if I want. It's on a nice long line. Um, I'm fishing it on 010 mainline and then an 08 um, power micron hook length as well so um, and that's to a 20 fine wire hook as well which is about right for four mil bread if it was really really hard I'd go down to a 22 and maybe an 07 bottom but 08 to a 20 is ideal I'm confident I can get a bream out on that but it's also nice for roach as well um, and that's just strung out number 11s and a couple of number 12s in the bottom half of the rig nice and simple um, um, but the thing to point out, I've got a very long line above, above as well. Um, on these canals, I like to keep the pole tip away. I can cast my rig all over the place as well. You get less tangles with a longer line. Um, and I just think you don't tend to miss so many bites with roach anyway, like unless you compared to sort of um, pellet fishing for F1s or whatever. So I like to fish a nice long line. And because there's a bit of wind about today, I've just got a couple of back shot as well, just to help keep everything nice and stable. And the last part of the rig, I've got the new three to five slick. Um, now a lot of people will just fish it through uh, a number one section and I know some people will fish, it, will fish it through a full top two kit. But I actually like uh, a kit and a half's length of elastic. So I'll actually, um, I've actually just shortened the amount of elastic and I've got a little bit of, um, this is sort of 80 pound braid there. So it's quite thick but soft braid. It's not gonna cut through the elastic or anything. And that just means I'm fishing a section and a half are three to five slick. It's something I do a lot on canals when a, just a number one isn't quite enough and a, and a full top two is a bit too much elastic. So it's something I do, especially with my lightish elastics. So uh, a little bit faffy, but it works for me. So um, and my caster rig is um, a similar, um, it's a 0.2 um, float. It's something I've cobbled together myself actually, so you can't actually buy these, but it's got a nice um, plastic bristle and a wire stem. I like a wire stem incidentally on a canal because you get a lot of surface skin. These, these are light floats, it keeps everything nice and stable. So um, um, when you need a bit more finesse, um, I do like a wire stem. And um, that's on uh, 010 mainline again, 08 hook length, and I've got a 16 hook on that. And, and my favorite six to eight slick, which is ideal for big perch, bream, big roach, everything like that. So that's the rigs. Well, the clock's ticking and the light's starting to fade a little bit now. So um, we've, it's been difficult, but we've still caught plenty of little roach. None of the quality fish that this canal is quite noted for, but um, I'm still more than happy just to catch a load of little roach. So um, three different swims and we've caught roach from them all as well. So it's nice to see that there's roach all the way through this canal now. And um, we've seen a few fish topping and stuff being chased by predators as well. So there's, there's plenty of fish in this canal. Well, I hope it's given you a bit of inspiration to get out on the canal yourself, traveling nice and light, just a couple of rigs and a minimum amount of bait. And it's surprising what you can catch. <laughs>